I am a major supporter of unconventional training. I believe it to be one of the greatest ways to train as a drug-free recreational lifter who is seeking general strength and size. And also, I believe it has a wide variety of applications for competitive athletes as well because unconventional thinking can produce unconventional results which exceed the norm. That said though, there's a lot of misconceptions that surround the topic of unconventional training. And today, I'm here to debunk all of this nonsense once and for all. Let's put the nail in the coffin. So, the first thing I'd like to bring to your attention is that unconventional training is a rather subjective term, isn't it? And what people fail to recognize is that the term training is used, not lifts. And as a result, when people talk about unconventional training, they assume that it is somehow referring to doing unconventional lifts exclusively and saying that, oh, conventional lifts are worthless and that unconventional training, quote unquote, cannot be applied to conventional lifts. But you see, folks, that is a clear contradiction. In fact, it doesn't even make logical sense to assume that because unconventional training simply means that you are addressing things from a different perspective and that can be universally applied to any type of activity, any type of sport. It even applies to the political field and self-improvement. Unconventional training simply means that you are doing something different from the rest of society. You are giving different advice. You are training in a different way. But difference can also occur within the conventional lifts themselves. I'll give you an example. Richard Hawthorne, one of the greatest powerlifters, pound for pound, amazing relative strength. And I did an interview with him too. He often does 10 sets of 10 deadlifts. Now, would you not agree with me that that is rather unconventional? It's a pretty unconventional way of doing things because most people don't do volume work with deadlifts, at least 10 by 10. The common argument would be that, oh, it's going to fatigue your lower back. You had a greater chance of injury. It's not going to build strength. But Richard's been doing it for years. That is an unconventional perspective. And clearly, his methods have produced really good strength. But he doesn't do unconventional lifts. Yet, his whole system is unconventional. What about George Lehman? George completely shocked the powerlifting world with his techniques. There was a big emphasis on cheat rows, cheat shrugs, progressive range of motion which was an old school time test technique from Paul Anderson and Bob Peoples. He brought it back to life and produced some of the best deadlifting numbers around. Became an absolute beast. Wasn't his perspective unconventional? Oh, it definitely was. Yet, he was a competitive powerlifter who specialized in the big three and his claim to fame was namely the deadlift. So unconventional training was very much applicable to the sport of powerlifting. And these two men exemplify this perfectly. And I can list a whole host of other examples. Therefore, the whole argument that unconventional training is isolated to unconventional lifts is complete garbage. It is refutable in every possible way. The simplest way that I could describe unconventional training is that you are following a system that deviates away from the norm. That is the most simple definition around. It does not imply that conventional lifts are worthless, nor does it imply that you cannot use an unconventional approach to standard weight training. That's all. And last I checked, every top athlete or a large percentage of them train in an unconventional type of way. They have different views about training. And that doesn't make any of them wrong. It just means that there are different perspectives. That is the real expression of unconventional training. And it's rather subjective to the sport that you're doing and in the context, right? So we need to get rid of this whole ideology that it can only be done on unconventional lifts because that is one of the most garbage statements of all time. In fact, a lot of people who do unconventional lifts their progression models are done in a conventional fashion. Standard five by five, standard three sets of 10. These are rather conventional ways of viewing things. An unconventional way of viewing things would be, you know what? Instead of just doing three sets of eight to 12, maybe I'm gonna do a five by 10. Maybe I'm gonna do a five by 20. Maybe I'm gonna do a four sets of 25. But guess what? That is not isolated to unconventional lifts. You can do a three sets of 20 on a dumbbell press. Now you might not see it too often in your commercial gym, but it is unconventional. Would you not agree with me? Mm -hmm. You see the obvious contradiction with the statements that some of these people make. It is factually wrong in every possible way. Another way that we can interpret unconventional training is with simple philosophies that aren't really 100% true. An example would be the whole slow and controlled tempo thing and squeezing your muscles. That is a rather conventional belief system, but it's not 100% true. I think we can all argue here that if you're just getting stronger and you're going through the range of motion of the exercise, progressive overload is taking place, 
that your muscles are going to get bigger. It is not necessary to squeeze your muscles. It is not a requirement to go extra slow. Yet a lot of people will believe that. You understand? Another ideology will be to say that if you get stronger, you won't get bigger. That's pretty conventional in the way of thinking. Or another one, bro science, a mild fibrillar versus sarcoplasmic. A lot of people believe that. This, this is extremely conventional thinking. Another conventional ideology which affects thousands of gym bros is that body part splits are the best way to go and that full body workouts don't work for advanced lifters. That's conventional in its way of thinking. Would you not agree? Another way that we can interpret unconventional training is the lack of certain things that can make your physique that much better. An example would be the neck training. It's rather unconventional to train your neck. Uh, most bodybuilders and gym bros are not training the neck. The only people who really do this are combat athletes, you know, uh, MMA fighters, wrestlers, people of that nature. So it is unconventional in the recreational sense, but among competitive fighters, it's rather conventional. So again, it goes back to the context. What might be normal in one sport is not normal in another, okay? So that's why people need to get this definition straight. They don't know what they're talking about. The way that I describe it is extremely simple. It is a different way of viewing training. It's something that deviates away from the norm and it can be applied to any type of sport, any type of exercise for the most part. And most guys who are at the elite level have a different perspective. Most strength coaches have a different perspective. It is rather unconventional. Some of the best have unconventional views. I would argue, for example, that Louis Simmons, at the time, his system was rather unconventional, the conjugate system. But now, it's become commonly accepted as a very effective way of gaining strength. Not everybody agrees with it, but at one time it was unconventional. And a lot of the exercises that we do were once upon a time unconventional. So again, it's about context and it's subjective and it does not mean that conventional lifts are worthless. Rather, it implies that you can view things from a creative perspective and draw your own conclusions. Some of the things I talk about on this channel, for instance, um, building up your traps. A lot of the advice that I was hearing years ago was to grab light dumbbells and slowly shrug and then squeeze and slowly lower back down with scapular retraction. That is a conventional ideology that does not work for most people. I'm not saying it's completely worthless, but I find that people make better gains when they do power shrugs. That is an unconventional way of viewing things. Another unconventional perspective is, say, recommending Olympic lifts to build up your traps. People don't really think about it, but it's true. You do Olympic lifts, your trap's going to build. Another unconventional idea is training the long head of your triceps. A lot of guys aren't doing this. They're just doing close to bench, but they're missing out on the long head of the triceps, man, which is really where the meat is. Another unconventional idea is training your forearms like an arm wrestler, you know, because uh, doing all these half rep preacher curls and wrist flexion exercises, it's unconventional. Or what about training like a, like a competitive wrist sport? It's unconventional. Now, just because you do these things does not mean that full range of motion curls are bad. Do you see the false correlation here that a lot of people like to draw? Basically, if you see a guy in a video doing a half rep preacher curl, okay, automatically, the critic will assume that full range of motion curls are bad. I mean, they're going to think that the person who's doing the half reps, that's his belief system. But again, this is false. And anyone who can conceive such an idea must, by default, have an extremely low IQ or they're just not paying attention. That's the only thing that I can draw from this because it's impossible that you can draw such a conclusion. If a guy is doing something, it does not imply that something else is bad. It just means that this is what he is choosing to do at this precise given moment in time. If someone is doing a weighted dip, it does not mean that the bench press is a bad exercise. If someone is doing a weighted chin up, it is not implying that the barbell row is a bad exercise. It just means that this is what the person is doing at that precise moment in time. Do you see the obvious, obvious, obvious contradictions? It is so clear that one cannot refute it. It is impossible to refute it because unconventional training does not mean anything negative in reference to conventional lifts. It just means that you are approaching things from a different perspective. It is unique. It is creative. And that is universally applied to all sports, all activities, and everybody has a little bit different views. Okay? So with that said, I'm going to conclude this video with the following statements. Unconventional training is universally applied to whatever you're trying to do. And it does not mean that something else is bad. It does not imply that conventional lifts are worthless. Nor does it imply that conventional thoughts are worthless. It just means that there is a different perspective. And it's usually a perspective that is founded off logic. A lot of it is also based off exercise science. And pretty much a lot of people do this as experience based as well. And it's not a bad philosophy. Many times this unconventional way of doing things produces better results than the herd mentality. Sometimes that's just how it is. Unconventional training can produce immense results if 
you're thinking correctly, and it's applied in a very logical way. So again, it is objective, it is logical, it is experience-based, it is a system that is universally applied to anything. And that's really all there is to it. It's all about being creative. That's the only way that I can describe this. It's not a hateful ideology. So there you have it, guys. Myths debunked.